What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be talking about view range in Revit. So view range is one of those topics that has been known to be notoriously difficult to understand and difficult to explain. So I thought it would be a good idea to create one extensive video uh, about this topic. So what view range uh, is all about, it's well it's all about representing uh, floor plan views. So everything that, that controls the graphics of your floor plan views or maybe a better way of explaining that would be uh, how things appear and what things appear in your floor plan view are going to be determined uh, by the uh, view range dialog. So this is uh, quite a complex dialog to understand mostly because Revit has its own logic and its own way of doing things and if you don't understand that logic that at some times can seem a bit counterintuitive uh, well then you're not going to uh, be able to represent your floor plans uh, in the best way possible. So in this tutorial I'm going to take the time to explain in depth each feature and how it can be used and how it's applied and all of the little tips and tricks along the way just to help you understand completely how to use this uh, notoriously difficult tool. Now this whole video uh, or this whole tutorial is part of a larger course. I've created a graphics in Revit course where I take the time actually four hours to explain each level of graphics in Revit just to completely understand how to well present your projects exactly how you want. Uh, Revit is kind of difficult when it comes to presenting things and, and graphics and appearance. It's usually hard to get things to look exactly how you want them to look so that's why I created this course. Now if you're interested in checking out the full course check out the first link in the description. It takes you to my Patreon and there you can get access to over 50 hours of advanced video content. Uh, for example like that course and many 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 other courses that they have. But uh, for this topic I thought it was extremely important to explain and I decided to make it uh, kind of free and available as a YouTube tutorial so take a look at this. Okay so without any further ado let's get into the tutorial. Now we're going to be taking a look at the view range settings in Revit. Now for this demonstration I'm going to be using this sample project. Now this is a simple house uh, project that I've done uh, a while back. It's a course that I have created and uh, it is available to see actually exactly how I've created this building. Now for this demonstration as you can see over here on this upper window I have a floor plan opened up. Now below over here I have one of these sections so it's at this horizontal section that's running through the building and I have that opened up so I can demonstrate what are the view range settings uh, actually referring to here in the section view. Okay so to access the view range setting I'm going to select the uh, floor plan over here just to make that view active and then here in the view properties let's just scroll down a little bit and then here underneath extents we have the view range. Now I'm just going to click here on edit to open up the view range dialog. Now alternatively you can get to this same dialog just by uh, typing in VR so that's the shortcut. So if you're doing it on a fly really quickly you can do it like that. Now once you open up the view range uh, dialog this will determine for your floor plans what are you actually looking at. Now this uh, is both true for a uh, work plane uh, for uh, floor plans as well as ceiling plans. Okay so as you can see over here we have the primary range and then we have the view depth uh, options. Now the main uh, thing that you should worry about especially in floor plans such as this one is where the cut plane is located at. So the cut plane is the uh, plane that's cutting your building in half horizontally so you can get that floor plan view. Now here uh, below in this, uh, in this section I've demonstrated that by placing this dashed or a dash dot uh, cut plane line over here, the red one. So it's cutting our building exactly at the height of 120 centimeters. Now by default uh, Revit is going to set your cut plane at 120 centimeters and feel free to change it uh, if, if that's necessary. Now uh, under uh, usually just under regulation uh, it's the cut plane is usually set to 100 centimeters at least in my area but make sure to check the code in your area uh, where the cut plane should be located. 
Okay, so once you set up the cut plane, you also have the top range and the bottom range. So what are these? So the, uh, the top range is this uh, green line over here on top, and then the bottom of the range is this blue line over here. Now, as you can see, if I just cancel out of this menu and zoom in, the blue line is overlapping with your floor plan. So the bottom will always be located on the bottom, or it always should be located on the bottom. Now, if we go and open up the uh, view range again over here, you'll notice that here uh, the bottom is set to the floor plan uh, 0, 00, which is the active view. Now, once you uh, create any elements over here uh, in your floor plan or in any other view, uh, how those elements will be visible in your floor plan will be determined by the view range. So if the elements are being cut by the cut plane, they will usually have that cut appearance. Now the cut appearance is something that's determined by your object styles menu, if you remember from earlier uh, in the course. So I'm just going to hit OK over here and then open up the object styles dialog. And then over here, you'll notice that for our line weights, we have the projection and then we have the cut. So for example, for walls, if I scroll all the way down here, you'll notice that for walls, the projection line is one, and then the cut line is four. Uh, this, uh, this can be seen if I just click OK out of this menu. If I zoom in over here, for example, over here, where we're cutting through the wall, we have this thick uh, four pen weight line. And then over here at the window, where we're just looking at the wall, uh, from, top, from the top, as you can see, this is that thin uh, number one line. So that's uh, that's what determines the lines for these uh, for walls and for projection. Uh, for example, if you take a look at the floor over here, the floor will uh, usually be using the uh, line weight number one. Now, different elements in Revit or different categories will have a different relationship between these. Uh, these uh, lines over here and uh, between these ranges. So, for example, the cut plane has kind of a weird uh, relationship when it comes to walls. So, let me explain what I'm talking about. Now, if you remember, this cut plane is at the height of 110 centimeters or 120 centimeters. You can see over here it says 120. Now, what I'm going to do is just zoom in over here, uh, go to the architecture tab, and then I'm going to start the wall command. Uh, WA is the shortcut. Now for this wall, for the height, I'm going to leave it unconnected. And for the height, let's place it instead of 120, let's place it at just 100 centimeters. Hit enter, and then I'm just going to place a simple wall just like that. And there we go. I'm just going to hit the escape key a couple of times. Now you will notice that this wall, if I zoom in, and looking at it side by side next to this wall, it's in projection view. Now the reason for that, of course, is it's be because it's below this cut plane. So here in the section, you can see that the wall is here below our cut plane, so it's not being cut, and that's why we have this projection view. Now if I select it and then change the uh, top constraint or the height to 120 and hit apply, now it's going exactly up to the line, but it's still not going to be cut. Okay, that's that seems reasonable, so let's try something different. So what I'm going to do now is to extend that, and let's try 121. In this case, it probably should be cut by the cut plane. So 121, hit apply, and as you can see, nothing happens. The appearance hasn't changed. If I zoom in over here, and perhaps if we can select that wall, kind of difficult to select it. It's going past that line just a little bit, but it's still not being cut. And if we extend it even further, as you can see now, it says unconnected height 144. Here in the floor plan, it's still uh, being presented as a projection view. Now for this is because uh, Re uh, Revit has a specific way of representing walls. Uh, if the wall is being cut by the cut plane just a little bit, it's still going to be represented in projection view. Now, if you extend it even further, for example, if you extend it to 200 centimeters and then hit apply, now you will see that it will be cut by the cut plane. So now it's going way past that cut plane and now it has that cut appearance with that uh, with that larger outline, the I think the pen weight was four, if I remember correctly. 
So walls have that uh, interesting relationship with cut plans, so that's something that you should keep in mind when it comes to uh, placing walls, and uh, that's why in some cases it might not look right the way that the walls are represented. Okay, moving on, the second uh, object or the second category that has kind of an odd relationship between uh, these, uh, the, this view range is going to be the floor. So for any other element, if you place it below this bottom line, it's not going to be represented. For example, if I perhaps select this wall and change it, so let's say that the uh, base constraint is top of foundation, so it's here below, and then the top is, I don't know, something like 40 centimeters, hit apply, so as you can see it's here below. Now before I demonstrate that, there is just one quick setting that I need to change, and that's going to be here in the properties, in the view range here for the view depth, uh, the level is going to be the same as the bottom level, so that's this level over here, uh, the 00 floor plan, but I'm going to change the offset from minus 400 just down to zero. So uh, these two are going to overlap. Now I'm just going to click OK, and there we go. Okay, so for any uh, element uh, such as this wall, if we uh, make it below the bottom line, uh, or the uh, bottom of the view depth, it's not going to be visible. So let's demonstrate that. I'm just going to select this wall, and go here into the properties panel, and then for the base constraint, instead of the uh, floor plan, uh, which is this one here, I'm going to change it to the top of foundation. So let's change it from this to top of foundation, hit apply, and then for the height, I'm going to change the unconnected height to something like, I don't know, let's try 60 centimeters, hit apply, and there we go. Now as you can see it disappeared over here and that's of course because it's below our bottom uh, line. Now even if I extend this to the bottom, so just like this, it's now 90 centimeters, it's still not going to be visible here in the floor plan. Only if I select it and make the unconnected height a 91, uh, so let me just type in 91, there we go, hit apply, now it is going to be visible. So only when it goes over that or when it cuts the bottom line, it's going to be visible in our floor plan and not before that. But let me show you a different element. So we can select this wall, we don't really need it anymore. So I'm just going to hit delete. Now here next to this building, I'm going to create a floor. So this floor is going to be located on the uh, zero, 00 floor plan uh, level. I'm just going to create a simple rectangle just like this and then hit finish. Now I've placed it over here just so it would be cut by this section so we can see it in section view. Now as you can see this floor is currently uh, located over here and it's going to, it's of course visible in the, uh, in the floor plan. So even though it's uh, on exactly on the bottom line, it's still going to be visible. But even if I select it, and then here we have this height offset from level, this is an option that we have for all floors, even if I type in something like minus 20 centimeters and then hit apply, as you can see, it's still visible. So floors are going to be visible even though they're below the bottom, just because this category has a that unique relationship with the bottom of the view depth. So even if we select it, and let's change this now to minus 121, uh, hit apply, it's still visible. Let's try 122, hit apply, and there we go. So I guess that's the magic number. 121 is the lowest uh, offset from the bottom uh, of the view range that the floor will be visible. If it's below that, it's not going to be visible. So that's just something that you should keep in mind when it comes to uh, this view depth and the uh, bottom uh, plane and the cut plane, how different elements can have, uh, can have different relationship with these uh, lines. Now, when it comes to these lines, as you remember, I showed you in the object styles menu. So let's go here to the manage tab, go to object styles. We have this projection and then we have the cut line weight. So we have these two options, but there is just one more option that's available in Revit and that's the beyond option. So as you remember from that previous uh, menu that I've opened up here, uh, the view range, so let's see. 
Okay, here we go, view range. Uh, we have this uh, view depth option and it's currently associated to level 00. zero. Now we do have the option to add uh, an offset to this and let's create it. I'm just going to type in something like minus 400, hit apply, okay. And now something that you might have seen is that this floor has now appeared. So we have uh, just added uh, 400 centimeters uh, beyond the bottom where elements are going to be visible. Now in this section over here, as you can see, I've got the temporary hide isolate on. And if I just turn that on and reset, you will see that here we have this view range. Uh, now this is currently set at minus 140. So let's uh, let's then, uh, I guess uh, it, it would make sense to go here to the view range and set that up to minus 140. Hit apply. Okay, and there you go, it still works. So this floor is now below our bottom and it wouldn't be visible in the bottom, but uh, if it's uh, here being cut by the view, uh, by the view range uh, distance, it's still going to be visible. But let's talk about the projection or the way that this is going to be represented. As you can see here, we have this regular line, but if I go here to additional settings menu and then open up line styles, and let's expand that menu. Here you will notice that we have this beyond line style. Now this is the line style that Revit will uh, add or associate with any elements that are below that bottom of the view, of, of our uh, view range and that are still in the view range. So if they're being cut by the view range or if they're above the view range, they're going to be represented by this beyond line. Now let me change the color of it maybe to, uh, let's change it to orange just so it matches this. Click OK and then we can make the line pattern D-2.5 millimeters and then let's hit apply. OK and as you can see now we have that. Now if I select this floor and bring it a little bit up, maybe minus 80, hit apply. Now as you can see we have regular black lines just because it's being viewed by this bottom. But if we go below 120, so maybe minus 130, apply, now we have that orange uh, dashed line. So that beyond line uh, or beyond line style is going to be uh, basically associated with any elements that are below our bottom but still uh, being cut by the view range. So if you want to have maybe a specific uh, representation for that, for example, something that I tend to do uh, for uh, my beyond line style is to go here to additional settings, line styles, let's open up the uh, lines uh, category to find the uh, beyond uh, subcategory. And here I, I tend to use the, the regular solid line but for the line color, instead of black, I like to use this dark gray uh, because it looks kind of further away. So I like that kind of half tone effect for all of the elements that are in this uh, beyond uh, range or beyond uh, representation. Now it's time to take a quick look at the top of view range. So here, this is the top of view range. And if I go here to properties, uh, find the view range see here we go under extents we have view range and here is the top of view range now usually the top of view range is going to have the same level so that's going to be the associated level 00, zero floor plan and then you're going to have an offset in this case it's set to 230 centimeters and if I just cancel out of this menu uh, you will see that if I select this line it's exactly at uh, 230 centimeters from the ground so why is this line important well let's see now this line is uh, really important when it comes to representing three, uh, fa three categories in Revit and those are Windows, Generic Models and Casework. So let's take a look at Windows first because I, I, I guess they would be uh, sort of a, the most important category uh, in Revit. So here in the section view, uh, if I zoom into this side of the building, uh, you can see we have a window over here and it's being cut by this cut plane. Now, if I go up to the floor plan uh, and zoom in over there, we have that window. It's being, it's cutting the, uh, it's cutting the the wall. And as you can see, uh, the the wall is in the cut uh, projection over here, or, or it's in the cut view mode. It's using cut lines, the four uh, weight. And then here, where the window is, we have just that projection, those projection lines, which are one weight 
or line weight 1. And then here on the other side, we again have 4. Now, if I go to the other side, let's go first here in the section view, you will notice that the window is here uh, above our cut plane, but it's still being cut by the top of the view range. And let's see what that looks like here. So if I zoom in, we have this window, but it's not really cutting through the wall. It looks like it's overlapping with the wall. And then uh, the wall is uh, the, it has that, uh, line weight 4 all the way through. We don't really have that part that's in projection and we don't have that white uh, area around the, the window. So why is that? Well, window is still going to be visible even though it's not being cut by the cut plane if it's uh, between the cut plane and the top or if it's being cut by the top. So in this case, it's being cut by the top so that's why it's visible. Now, if I were to select this window and maybe change the sill height from 200 to maybe uh, to 40, let's apply. Now, as you can see, it's above the top uh, of, of your view range, and here in the floor plan, it's gone. Now, let's bring it down back to 200, apply, or actually, let's bring it all the way down to the cut plane. So, uh, just make sure that you're looking here at the floor plan and the section simultaneously. So, if I just drop this down maybe to sill height 100, and apply, now, as you can see, that window is cutting the wall appropriately, as it should, and here we can see that uh, it's, uh, the, uh, the, the wall is kind of stopped over here and we have an opening in the wall, and then we have this white area around the window, and the, uh, the presentation is now correct. But the problem is we have had to move our window all the way he down here to the cut plane. Now, for these bathroom windows, they tend to be quite high, so I'm just going to move this back to... Uh, let's select it, select the window, yeah, and let's move it uh, back up to cell height 200 and then hit apply. Now, luckily, there is a solution for this because you don't want to have a nice regular presentation of uh, windows in, in Revit, and maybe to demonstrate the height, you can use sections or maybe a cell height uh, over here or a tag that includes cell height or dimensions that would include cell height. Uh, but for this window, it would be nice to have regular representation, graphical representation, as we do over here. So luckily for that, we do have a tool, and that tool is located here on the uh, View tab. So on the View tab, we have these uh, plan views, and if we open up this drop menu, we have the plan region. Now, if I select that plan region, uh, it allows me to create uh, some line work to draw out. Now, I tend to just use simple rectangles and only uh, grab the, the, the windows that I have. So in this case, that would be this window here. Let's go to modify just to make sure that it aligns with the outer lines of the wall. There we go. Hit finish. And once you create that, as you can see here, it says plan region. It's selected. And if I deselect this, you will notice that we have this green line. So uh, this uh, this is represented by the, this green outline over here. And if I select that outline here in the modify panel uh, for our plan region, we have the edit boundary option, which again goes into draw mode. But more importantly, we have a view range option. So if I select that, we get a new view range. So what this allows us to do is to change our view range so this will have appropriate representation just in this area over here. So just in this area, I can change the cut plane from 120 to 200, hit apply, and now as you can see, this window is being cut. Okay, it looks a bit odd, so it might make sense to make this a bit smaller, just to grab the window, same thing on the other side, but at the end you have a correct representation of this uh, window and you can hide the the you can hide the plan region or something if it bothers you with the green lines and everything but now we do have the proper representation even though we haven't changed the height of the window so this uh, plan region just allows you to override the uh, view range properties in a small selected area of your floor plan so it's a really useful tool for workarounds 
Okay, now let's get back to the other two uh, categories in Revit that have a unique relationship with that top of view range. And here, if I go into this section view, you will notice that here in this bathroom, up here I have a generic model and then a casework model. So these are just simple uh, families that I have created. And currently, both of them are above this top, uh, top uh, cut line. Now, if I select this generic model and then move it down, you will notice as soon as... I go below the top of uh, top of view range, it appears here in the floor plan. So again, even though it's not being cut uh, by the cut plane, it's still going to appear. So that's how these generic models work. Same thing goes with casework. If I just move the casework down a little bit, you will notice that the casework will appear over here even though it's above the cut plane. So the, the reason for this is simple, just because uh, casework is one of those components that you have those upper cabinets, and it's usually nice to have some sort of a representation. So if those upper cabinets are being cut by the top of, uh, the top of your view range, uh, they will appear in your floor plan. So that's just something to keep in mind. And if I just move it above, it simply moves above our, uh, it's, it simply disappears in our floor plan because it's no longer being cut or uh, being between the top of uh, view range and the cut plane. So that concludes the in all of the information about the view range uh, dialog in Revit. So keep in mind that you can play around with these settings and uh, have a quite an accurate representation of, uh, of what you want to have on your model. Now, it does take some time to get used to it because it is quite complicated, especially the fact that it includes these different categories and how they interact with the uh, view range properties. But once you get the hang of it, it is going to be quite uh, useful. Also, uh, at any point, if you're having trouble remembering which one of these lines are, uh, you have this show option and it opens up a, a, this quick demonstration where it shows you uh, which is which, which is also, uh, also quite useful to have. Now, I'm just going to cancel out of this menu and uh, keep in mind for these families, just to make sure that you know which category they are, when you've selected the family, uh, you can go here to properties and if it says a generic model, then that means that is a generic model. And here for this one, casework. Uh, if it says casework over here, uh, that means this is a casework category family. And if you're not sure, are you setting your families uh, up in the correct category? If you select any of these families and go here into edit family, here, as you can see, I've opened up the generic family. Uh, here uh, we have this option for family category and parameters and once you open up that menu as you can see here the generic models is highlighted but feel free to change it to anything else and then just cancel out of that save the changes and load it back into the project so you do have that option as well.